Tattoos have been around for ages, and being officially the oldest form of art, they were there probably even longer than those cute little horse drawings we find in ancient caves. These days, tattoos are skyrocketing in popularity and shedding their old taboos. In fact, about 46% of Americans sport some ink. Still, it's Italy that takes the crown, because around 48% of Italians have tattoos. But what if tattoos weren't just a beauty statement? In fact, they're on the brink of becoming something much more significant, potentially even health trackers. There's a concept of smart pigments. You know how ink gets injected when you're getting a tattoo? These smart pigments may potentially work as health trackers, keeping tabs on vital health metrics like blood sugar, hydration, and UV exposure. Using advanced pigments that respond to biological and environmental changes, these tattoos could eventually replace the need for wearables or implants. Such tattoos might glow under specific lights to warn you of health issues in real time. They can potentially come in handy for astronauts as they could measure radiation exposure. How many brains does a human being have? Normally, we have two brains. Surprised? Me too. But recent research reveals that your heart has its own nervous system, often called a mini-brain, which independently regulates its rhythm separate from the brain. A team of scientists studied zebrafish, uncovering the complexity of this heart network in nature communications. Previously, we thought the heart solely followed the autonomic nervous system's commands from the brain. However, it turns out the heart has its own neural network in its outer layers, making it more sophisticated than we believed. According to the lead researcher, this mini-brain is essential for maintaining a steady heartbeat and houses different neurons that perform specific functions, including a group that acts like pacemakers. Ever watched classic sci-fi like Frankenstein and thought, that's wild? Well, it may not be as sci-fi as you believed. Researchers have discovered a third state of existence where cells from dead organisms can keep functioning, sometimes even gaining new abilities. Scientists have observed dead frog skin cells transforming into xenobots, which can move and heal themselves. Human lung cells can also self-assemble into anthrobots, tiny organisms that aid in cellular repair. How do these cells continue functioning post-mortem? One theory suggests hidden electrical pathways enable communication. It all depends on conditions like temperature and energy levels. When skin gets hurt, our blood clots kickstart healing. Now, researchers have created a blood-based implant that takes this natural process up a notch, especially for fixing broken bones. They developed a biocooperative regenerative material using synthetic peptides to enhance the structure of blood clots. In tests with rats, this gel-like substance, which can be 3D printed, showed promise in repairing bone damage. If adapted for humans, it could significantly boost our body's healing abilities. Let me translate that from scientific to English. We will soon be able to turn blood into regenerative implants. Those implants will be easy to get, since we all have blood and they will be almost free because, duh, we all have blood. And it's free for us. The research focused on the solid part of blood clots, known as regenerative hematoma. They created custom molecules called peptide amphiphiles that enhance regenerative hematoma's natural functions. When added to blood, these peptide amphiphiles sped up clotting and helped form stronger structures. Using peptide amphiphiles with rat's blood, the team successfully repaired small skull bone defects. Key repair cells were active in the new material, indicating its effectiveness. In recent years, there's been a lot of buzz about regrowing natural teeth. I mean, modern medicine has cured a bazillion of extremely tough conditions. Yet, we have to shell out a pretty penny each time we go to the dentist. It's weird. Our hair regrows, nails too. Why can't our teeth do the same? Let's break down the research and see when we might actually be able to do this. According to the World Health Organization, about 7% of people 
over 20 lose all their teeth, and that jumps to 23% for those over 60. In the UK, around 5% of adults aged 16 and up have no natural teeth. Right now, options for tooth loss include implants, bridges, and dentures, but none of those are real tooth regrowth. Still, researchers have been looking into ways to make it happen using methods like RNA, stem cells, and mineral regeneration. One exciting development comes from Japan, where researchers at Kitano Hospital announced a new tooth regrowth medicine using RNA to block a molecule called USAG1, which stops tooth growth. They've been working on this for about eight years. Their theory is that humans have the capability to grow a third set of teeth, and this drug could help activate those buds the drug showed promise in animal trials and was set to begin human testing in September 2024, with hopes for availability by 2030. Another method involves stem cells. A recent study from India concluded that using stem cells for tooth regeneration is realistic and could also help with bone and soft tissue repair in the mouth. Meanwhile, a team from the University of Washington has developed stem cell-based organoids that can produce dental enamel, a significant step towards repairing damaged teeth. However, there are ethical concerns surrounding stem cell use, especially with embryonic cells. Experts suggest using stem cells from the patient's own body could eliminate some of these issues. An alternative approach is mineral regeneration. A 2019 study created a gel that can repair damaged enamel by forming a new layer of calcium phosphate, the main component of enamel. This method shows promise as a cheap, scalable solution. While progress has been made in tooth regeneration, it's still uncertain when we'll be able to fully regrow teeth. For now, the research is encouraging, but there's a long way to go before tooth regrowth becomes a reality for everyone. Researchers at Cambridge have found that people can quickly learn to use the third thumb, a robotic prosthetic, which boosts manual dexterity. The study highlights the need for inclusive design in tech, ensuring it benefits everyone, regardless of background. The third thumb is worn on the opposite side of the palm and is controlled by pressure sensors under the toes. During a test at the Royal Society Summer Science Exhibition, 596 participants aged 3 to 96 tried the device, with only 4 unable to use it effectively. Participants had a minute to get familiar with the thumb before attempting tasks that involved picking up objects. A whopping 98% managed to use it right away, and performance was consistent across different demographics. While younger kids faced more challenges, older participants showed similar abilities though performance declined slightly with age. Now, think about something comforting like your granny reading to you. Sometimes we get those memories randomly, without even forcing ourselves. To understand better how it all works, scientists focused on studying the human brain's memory hub, the hippocampus. Traditionally, rodent brains were used to understand brain function, but researchers have discovered significant differences between mouse and human brains. Using advanced techniques, they found that neuron connections in the human hippocampus are fewer but more reliable than in mice. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.